Hi there, this is Lee Lehman, and I'm here this afternoon to talk to you about astrolabes. Now this little beauty here that I'm just showing you, the ruler that I have next to it is um, actually eight inches long. And so you can see this is a rather large astrolabe. Uh, you can see with my hands around it that this is definitely a pretty good sized astrolabe. This is brass. Uh, and I'm going to talk about the components of it. And I'm also going to show how it actually works with our little friend here. Because both of these are astrolabes that we sell here at um, Lehman Associates. And this little key ring guy, and you see this is the key ring that uh, many of you have seen, um, is actually based on, uh, derived from, this larger guy. And so I'm going to show you how a lot of this works on the larger one, uh, and we'll occasionally refer to the smaller one as well, uh, as we look at the components of the astrolabe and how it works. And what I'm going to show you in the end is a house cost calculation, and then we're going to work with that a little bit um, as we compare it to other astrolabes and how they work. Well, the first thing here is this particular astrolabe, and our little key ring as well, is set to approximately the latitude of New York City or Cincinnati. So it's around 41 degrees north. Now, why are astrolabes set to a particular latitude? Well, that's traditionally how they were done. So an astrologer in a particular city would have an instrument maker who would make an astrolabe for that particular location. And uh, basically, what is different is the back of the plate on the astrolabe. And here I'm showing you uh, a pewter version of a plate that is done for 31 north latitude and you'll see that this background section here uh, at the top is pretty wide it's almost taking up half of the area now if I show you a plate for 40 north latitude what you'll see is that that uh, shape there we go is a little bit different uh, it's more compressed and so you can actually tell the latitude of a plate uh, based on how much curvature there is. Here, this one at, that's a little more than the 40 degrees has that rather strong curvature on the back. Now, there are movable parts on the astrolabe. This is called the alidad, and this pointer moves. The plate here uh, is called the reap plate, and it sits on top of uh, the plate that's in the back, the back plate, um, and all of these are used. Now, on our little guy, let me just show you what the back of an astrolabe typically looks like. This ring back here is used for computing the degree position of the sun on any particular day because it has a wheel, and on the wheel are the months of the year, and then you, go, uh, you use the pointer to go to one of those particular months. You set that and then that tells you the degree of the sun on that day. Now, these larger type models uh, are a little cuter because on these, the outside part of the reap plate actually has the calendar uh, on it, and so you can set your alidad right to it. Now, this particular example I'm doing is for December 26th at 11 a.m. in New York City. Um, New York City is 73 West 57, so it's pretty close to um, the meridian for Eastern Standard Time. And why that's meaningful, I'll get to in a moment. Now, pretty much all astrolabes are designed so that you can hang them. This little guy, I'm just hanging, you see my hand here. Um, the big guy I have pointed a little bit because of the 11 a.m. bit I'm doing. Now, on all these astrolabes, midnight, is at the top, noon is at the bottom, 6 a.m. is to the right side, and um, 6 p.m. is to the left side. But now this is LMT. Well, that's local mean time. Why local mean time? Because these things were developed in a period where people observed local mean time. So they didn't have a choice of standard time. Since we operate in standard time, we have to convert our time to local mean time for it to work on an astrolabe. And that's that four uh, minutes per degree idea uh, that you learned when you did your chart calculations that you have to adjust 
uh, depending on how far off um, the meridian you are, and hence why I picked a New York City chart as my example. Now, um, here's my midnight, here's my noon, but in both our little uh, our little friend here, uh, as well as in the big guy, there are actually notations for the hours uh, of the day, so that I can move my my read plate, which has this zodiac wheel and the calendar date to the 11 a.m. position. And from there, uh, you have to look at the plates to see how they run. But I have an ascendant line that's right here. And all I have to do to read the ascendant is look where my zodiac wheel cuts that particular ascendant. And here it's around 10, 11 or so of Pisces. Um, when I calculate the chart, um, on, on a computer program, I get the 13 Pisces. That's actually my difference with how much off the meridian I am. So this is a pretty good calculation. Um, I'll do another one of these videos that you can see where I'll show what happens when you do it on a, an astrolabe of a different size. Now also on the back of these plate, there are other lines that represent the other house cusps. You'll see this in some of the astronomical sources as the uneven hours. But let me also mention that it really doesn't matter whether it's getting cut uh, on this side of the zodiac wheel or on the other side. Uh, you do need to know a little bit of, of uh, astronomy to get to it, but the whole point here is this, that this whole section here is where you have your your cusp lines, and not you can if you think of all the 12 cusps occurring in basically this half of the uh, astrolabe, you'll realize that that's not actually how they're going to work because they would be clustering too much around our zodiac. So it's actually you have to see where where you actually get the cut. In our example in the next um, in our next example that we'll see on the, the next video, we'll actually be looking on the left side uh, of the uh, of the zodiac line, but that's what you're looking for. Basically, the astronomy you need to know is that that uh, if this is a chart done for uh, a couple of degrees of Capricorn on the Sun, because this is done on December 26th, uh, then that means that dawn, that degree of the Sun is going to have to be on the ascendant. And so it's that kind of practical knowledge of uh, astronomy that fits in with the astrological relationships, which is what you need to know. Now, the point here uh, of why you would be using an astrolabe is precisely this. If you've done the by hand calculations uh, to do a chart, which is kind of helpful to understand how this process has gone on, you will know that this, uh, that the hard part of calculating a chart is getting the house cusp. This gives you the house cusp when you get used to using it, you can do it in the course of um, a minute or less uh, to get to the ascendant uh, and then to get to the other house cusps. This puts it on the same level. These uh, people who are using astrolabes had ephemerides or the equivalent of ephemerides. So once you had the house cusp, you had the ephemeris, you could come up with a fairly accurate chart, maybe not a precise chart, but a fairly accurate chart in just a few minutes instead of what you would have to do if you were doing the computation by hand. And that's why you used an astrolabe.